25 years after the original? Can the remake live up to standards? Let's find out. Are you Hello my fellow Latter-day Saints, Kenzie Retro here and welcome to another episode of Kenzie Retro's Reviews. Today, we're going to be looking at The Lion King, the 2019 live action adaptation that got released just last week, marking 25 years since the fur, the original Lion King came out. Now, for many a 90s kid like myself, The Lion King was one of the ultimate films that we grew up watching all the time. Films like The Little Mermaid, films like Beauty and the Beast, then Aladdin, then The Lion King. Films like that made our childhood what it is today. And, and then you've got other films like Cool Runnings as well. Which begs the question, should I do a review of uh, Cool Runnings? Maybe do a retro reviews? Well, who knows? Anyway. Time to get on to the review. Now I'm going to try and keep this as spoiler free as possible, but because this is a live action adaptation of the original, there's not really much else we can say. Um, there's not really much else I can say. I mean, how can you spoil the how can you spoil the original Lion King if you um, how can you spoil the original Lion King when pretty much everyone has seen it at this point? Anyway, on to the review. Let's start with the story, as always. Now, again, like I say, there's not really much we can add to the film. No side plot like in Beauty and the Beast, where you had more backstory for Belle, Beast, and Maurice. Aladdin, with the whole um, genie, genie romance subplot, genie, looking, genie having a love interest. Uh, there's no subplot here, but, again, like I say, it's, it's one of those cases of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, I can't fault the story, it's just, it, it's, it, it's up there as one of the most original ideas that Disney came up with during the Renaissance, which is between 1989 and 1999. Starting with starting Little Mermaid, finishing with Tarzan. That's what D Disney fans call that the Disney Renaissance. Anyway, uh, I mean, it, it, it's a great story. Simba wants to become King of Pride Rock and has to learn how to do that in the best way possible. Scar wants to take the, take the throne for himself. And uh, the, a whole, a, just, just the usual Lion King shtick. Uh, like, like I say, trying to keep trying to keep the live action adaptation spoiler free, while referencing the original. It's not as easy as it looks, folks. But I've done this long enough to be able to get it down to a T, get it down to an art form. But I can't fault the story. Like I said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's, a lot of it's mainly shot for shot, but. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But anyway, next up, we've got we've got the characters. And my goodness me, they just look so lifelike. Which I'll get into on the visuals later on. The visuals, uh, the, the the characters, it's uh, all the characters you know and love. You've got Donald Glover as the adult Simba. You've got Beyonce, yes, Destiny's Child Beyonce, Crazy in Love Beyonce, married to Jay Z Beyonce. Playing the adult Nala, I 
can't remember the I can't remember the name of the actors that play. Um, okay, I'll get the cast to stop just now. Um, Nineteen cast. There we go. Nice and easy. Yep, and with it. Um. <clears throat> Chiwetel Ejio 4, if that's how you pronounce it. If I pronounced it wrong, I apologise. A scar, John Oliver Azazu. Ah, in ah, this is in order of appearance. You've got the almighty James L. Jones as Mufasa. Seriously, you want me to say it again? Hmm? Wait a second. Oh, son of a... Oh, Tom, son of Never mind. Never mind. Gone off the hook on that one. John Canny as Rafiki as Anderson Squash Banana. Uh, Alfred Woodard as Sarabi. J.D. McCary as the young Simba. Shahadi Wright Joseph as the young Nala. Penny Johnson Gerald as Serafina. Keegan Michael Key. Now, that's a name I'm familiar with, who plays Kamari. But what else has he been in? Because I have definitely seen his face before. As soon as I saw the name, I was like, yeah, I've seen this guy before. What's he been in? Uh, oh, he was Ducky in Toy Story 4. He's stuck in Toy Story 4. Uh, he, was a, he was a guest on Jimmy Fallon at one point. Bob Burgers. Samurai Jack. Oh my word, he was Archer! He was an Archer! Laura! <laughs> guest starred on The Simpsons. Oh, good, he was in the Angry Birds movie. Keanu. Played himself in the Muppets TV series, Modern Family, Fruits of Nature, Hotel Transylvania. Yeah, uh, guest appearance on uh, Rick and Morty. Uh, guest appearance on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Parks and Recreation. Um. Guest starred on How I Make Your Mother. Series on Unfortunate People. Hmm. Interesting. He's got a lot to his name, I'll give him that. Wow. <laughs> that was about that. Um, Eric Andre as Azizi. Uh, Florence Kasumba as Shenzi. Seth Rogen as Pumba. Billy Eichner as Timon. Amy Sedaris as the Guinea Fowl. Chance the Rapper, or Chance Bennett, as he was credited as, as the Bush Baby, Josh, McCare, Josh McCrary as the Elephant Shrew, as I, I've mentioned Donald Glover, I've mentioned Beyonce, and Phil Lamar as Impala, and then we've got Jay Lee as the voice of the additional hyenas. Now what's this guy been? Phil Lamar. I recognise the Pulp Fiction, one of his biggest roles. 
Mind you, that was way back in 1994. Oh, he's uh, been in. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, uh, Scooby Doo, guest starred on Supergirl, DC Superhero Girls, guest starred, as, guest starred in The Flash, Mortal Kombat, he's been in Mortal Kombat, he's been in The Lion Guard, he's been on. Ah! There you go! He's. I, I would show the footage, but I risk getting copyright claims by Fox. And now over to Ollie Williams for the Black Hue Weather Report. Ollie, it's going rain! Thanks, Ollie. And one of my favourites. In local news, Hurricane RuPaul is working his or her way up the coast. We now go to Ollie Williams for the Black Hue Weather Report. Uh, how's it looking, Ollie? It's raining sideways! Sounds rough, Ollie. Do you have an umbrella? Have hey, one! Where is it? It's that out two miles away! Anything else we can do for you? Bring me some soup! What kind? Chunky! Thanks. Star Wars Resistance, Avengers Assemble. He's been on a lot of TV series. Uh, Dark Side of Three. He's got a few video game credits to his name as well. Oh my god, there was a Stretch Armstrong TV series? I, I remember Stretch Armstrong when I was younger. How's about that? Uh, again, DC Simmons. Oh, he was in The Incredibles 2! <laughs> nice! Uh, Robot Chicken. Why am I not surprised? Uh, Shanti, be cool, Scooby Doo, yada yada yada, Futurama. Um, again, Samurai Jack, Injustice Two. He's he's done pretty well for himself. He's done really well for himself. Oh my word, he was in The Simpsons as well, and uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. Tell us about that. Oh, Lucy, he was in Lucifer as well. Yeah. Overall, you've got a great cast. You've got a great cast there. Everyone casted perfectly for their role. I mean, great job on getting James Earl Jones back as Mufasa. Wait. Sorry, what was that? Do it again? Mufasa? Okay. Anyway. I mean, like I said, I can't fault the casting. And... Timon and Pumbaa especially, I mean, they were everywhere. I mean, they, I mean, back when the original Lion King came out, they even got their own spin-off TV show with Hakuna Matata as their theme song. I mean, why, what else? But, oh my word, there's one scene in particular. I mean, you've got the, uh, I mean, I mean, we all know that. What do you want me to do? Dress and drag and do the hula? We all know that scene. But instead of it being that, I won't say what it is because it is just so out of left field. I was not expecting them to do this. But beggar's belief, it worked. Like I say, the character's so well written. And Scar, oh my word. So lifelike. I mean, you can even see the Scar. And I've always wondered how Scar actually got that, well, Scar. I've always wondered how they managed that. Anyway, uh, like I say, characters are great. But, um... I, 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 I can't fault it. I can't fault it. I can't fault the characters. The visuals. Oh, the visuals. Wow! How amazing it looked. How amazing it looked. It just... Oh. Let's just move on to the next part. I cannot fault the visuals. I'm, I'm being serious, guys. I can't say anything about the visuals. Because I can't fault the visuals. Then... The soundtrack. Now, those who know me very well know how much I love my soundtracks. And this film didn't disappoint. Back in 1994, it had such an incredible soundtrack. Won two Academy, Academy Awards for Can You Feel the Love Tonight? And the score, as well, done by the great Hans Zimmer. My favourite film composer in the business, by the way. 
Then you've got... I mean, of course, as is tradition with the live-action adaptations, you've got to have some new songs for the film. Now... The only song they really had in Dumbo, which I reviewed earlier this year, it was... I wouldn't recommend it. If you want to watch Dumbo, watch the original. The only song they really had was Baby Mine on a ukulele. And they only had the... a sort of variation on the Pink Elephant on Parade. Then, Beauty and the Beast, you had uh, How Does a Moment Last Forever, Days in the Sun, and my favourite, Evermore, which I've covered, which I've done a music cover of on this channel, by the way. Um, what else is there? What else is there? Uh, Aladdin, Speechless, fantastic song. May do a cover of that one at some point. Anyway. Uh, then you've got The Lion King. They got a new song in, and it's called Spirits, and it's Beyonce that sings it. I won't see where it comes in the film, but I've listened to the entire soundtrack, and it sounds amazing. There's actually another song, but it's played over the end credits. It's called Never Too Late, and of course, Elton John back on board. Fantastic. I mean, I, I like the updates they did to the songs, and there was a bit of doubt with Be Prepared. Let's put it this way, when you see it on the screen, Be Prepared is a lot more intense, in my opinion, a lot more intense than in the original. I mean, my karaoke boss said, you can't beat the original Be Prepared. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's got a point. I mean, he says, he says his words, Jeremy Irons has, uh, Jeremy Irons has swam to his uh, performance. But with the, vis with the visuals, Be Prepared here is much more intimidating. And then, so yeah, confer so yeah, rest assured folks, Be Prepared is definitely in the film. It's on the soundtrack, and it's definitely in the film. And I enjoyed it, because I, I, was, I was just, I was feeling really uneasy when Scar was singing Be, well, was performing Be Prepared. Then you've got the score. How do you match the score of 1994? I'm... I'm at a loss for words. I mean, we all know the scene at the end where Simba takes his place climbing to the top of Pride Rock. The music in that still gives me goosebumps to this day. They used that music in one of the trailers. They did it justice. They did the soundtrack justice. So. There you go. 10 out, 10, 10 out of 10s across the board. Meaning we have our first ever 100% on my channel. So, does this get my seal of approval? Well, if it's got if it's got one hundred if it's got one hundred percent, absolutely, absolutely, it's got my seal of approval. Because Dumbo, that's how a live action adaptation should be done. I mean, I mean, there were there were some things in. Dumbo that I enjoyed, like visuals and the Pink Elephant on Parade seemed much more disturbing than the original. But, uh, 
The Lion King was one of those films growing up that was like, oh my word, when they announced they were going to be remaking this one, I thought, oh boy, this is not going to end well. All those doubts swept away. But anyway, that is my that is it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, as always, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized and follow me on this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the Light of Disney Notification Squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. And make sure you turn on all notifications. On the left, you've got my reaction to the Season 10 trailer of The Walking Dead, which was released at San Diego Comic Con. And on the right, you've got my reviews playlist. Got some Formula 1 and my podcast for you tomorrow, folks. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out, and as always, stay faithful.